Hello guys, welcome back again to We The Panel, a Terrace House podcast. A podcast where we talk about the very first series of Terrace House, Boys and Girls Next Door. Hi, my name is Jason, and welcome back to this lovely, lovely episode of a podcast. Oh boy, but before we begin, let me introduce the rest of our panelists at We The Panel. For sure, we got our over here, our favorite Tim, our everyone's favorite Tim, Tim, oh yeah, that's you. That's you, buddy. Yeah, you, Tim. How you been, What's up? man? Me? Uh, yeah, you. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Great to be here. Great to be paneling on We the Panel. Yeah, man. Oh, I love the wordplay. Yeah. Okay. If this is how it's going to be for the rest of the episode, then we'll go to the next person. <laughs> I'm not gonna do no puns. Um, with James, <laughs> I see you there, buddy. Uh, how you got? How you doing, man? How you doing this lovely, lovely day that is either sunny or rainy? <laughs> yeah, or you're right. That's very confusing. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. You know, weather's been nice lately, except for today, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, things have been good. Yeah. Things have been good. Uh, and Terrace House has been interesting. So I'm excited to get into that today. Yes, it is very interesting, especially for this episode, considering the fact that, yeah, new people, new season. But before we start, we, uh, you know, explaining or going to recap on this episode, um, how does everyone will be able to reach our podcast? You know, how, how's that going to work? <laughs> to, all our, uh, to all our lovely fans out there, um, you can catch We The Panel, a Terrace House podcast on all podcasting platforms. That's like the most popular ones like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and other less known ones, but still awesome ones like Radio Public, Pocket Casts, and Breaker. Yeah. So if you're looking for us, you can find us on Anchor, anchor.fm backslash we dash the dash panel if you see that brown background with the gray house that's us yeah and for all um we the panel related stuff like on the daily you can take a look at our instagram link down below uh yeah that's all james yeah that's all him with the the pics and keeping y'all up to date with our up to date so with that being said james take us into it Oh, thanks, man. There was just there was, that was that was a great intro. Uh, just letting you guys know, he found all of that stuff on our anchor page. So once again, you can find us there. Uh, and also to everyone watching on YouTube, hello, welcome. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what's happening. Uh, or let us know your opinions on the episode that we're watching, and hit the notification bell so you'll be kept up on everything we the panel. But all right, as you can tell, it's a. Uh, just us guys here, we're having another broadcast, and we are going to be recapping Terrace House, Boys and Girls Next Door, episode 40, titled, He is Mr. Perfect. But mm. the episode starts, as it always does, with all of the panelists talking about what happened last episode. So what did happen? The big thing was we got to meet the three new members, Yosuke, Rina, and Midori. And we got to see a little bit into what they're doing in the house. So the episode actually does start with everyone minus Yosuke being in the kitchen. And it was, it was really just a little short introductory thing with a little bit of small talk. And then Daiki and Taechan leave. And Midori was like, hey man, I really wish Yosuke was here. I was really hoping that he would be around this morning. And speaking of good old Yosuke himself, we cut to him working with a very familiar song. You know, we got to hear Santeria again, but without any surfing. Like the five time? I don't know, man. <laughs> Every beach scene. Yes. <laughs> Every season premiere. <laughs> season, at least. Yes, we, we got to hear it again, but this time no surfing. Be because we actually got to see Yosuke doing some nice little scenery pictures, little photography on the beach in this like, I don't know what to call it, like a little pathway with a bunch of trees. And it was nice, a uh, very short kind of scene, but it was, it was, it was nice. Uh, 
and we actually cut back to the house where we see Miwako and Rina cleaning. And while they're cleaning, you know, they're like, hey, like, what's up with Midori? And Rina's like, hey, so Midori was on the phone crying and drinking. And they're like, oh, no, uh, we'll see what happens with that. And we cut to Midori, who is in the room, bottle, bottle of wine, glass of wine in her hand and crying on the phone. And what we heard, at least, was that the person she was on the phone with said that there was something about going to go find themselves. So we actually cut to the girls going into the room and Midori tells them that she's kind of been running into some financial problems ever since she moved out of her parents' house. And now she's really worried because her boyfriend is actually moving to the U.S. or moving abroad to study English. And because of this, uh, Midori talked about how before her boyfriend said that he's going to be happy by making sure that she's happy and in order to make her happy he's gonna push his own dreams aside but now that kind of mentality has changed because he wants to kind of think for himself and study english and midori is like okay well if you're gonna do that then it's probably best that we break up with him or that we break up and yeah we like we hear a little bit we hear this little thing about how the boyfriend said that he wants her to wait for him but from what we can hear is that midori and her boyfriend have now broken up so mm. yeah what do you guys think about this because it's very like it's a very interesting situation and i don't want to throw midori under the bus but I guess the real question I want to ask you guys is, is she, is her breaking up with her boyfriend, like, is that for selfish reasons? Because once again, it's because he wants to follow his dreams. Um, and those dreams just so happen to be not, they just so happen to be him doing something for himself instead of doing something for her. You know? mm. Well, um, I'd say it's selfish, but also like the dude promised to put his dreams on hold for her. So Midori is not out of like, you know, it's not out of line expecting that because he promised that don't go promising something you can't keep. So like, yeah, it's selfish, but maybe that's like, you know, like if she can't get over that, then that's kind of like a red flag, but also it's also on the guy for like her ex-boyfriend now, I guess for promising something that he wasn't able to provide. Like that's it. That's simple. It's on the dude. True. Say true. Say Tim. Um, if you're going to build a relationship based on that foundation of mm. one side, I think it's pretty one-sided. Like, I don't know. Well, they haven't been going out for a while, only like nine months. Right nine, eight months. So it's not even a year. It's crazy. That's it's pretty cool that they live together. So, um, yeah, but if the intention of the beginning of the relationship was about her happiness and not about his, it's kind of a concern, but at the same time, if the guy was okay with that and now he's changing it, mm. better cut it off now before it gets worse. Cause we'll find out, like, we'll talk about it more. Cause some person, a very cool guy really <laughs> pointed this out. I'm like, yeah, if, if this is a big hurdle, how come? Yeah, we'll talk about it more. But yeah, it's, I don't know. I guess it's not selfish because the expectation of the in relationship of that was built on that reason, right? Like, a, that's exactly. A that's so literally like, that. Yeah. If you can't like keep your part of that deal, then yeah, then what kind of relationship is this built on? Exactly. It's like, you know, having the dynamic where like the, the guy says he'll pay for everything and, you know, like promise to provide for the woman and the woman's like, okay, that's cool. And then the guy's all like shocked when she's like, you know, only into him for his money or for his like job security or a lifestyle that he can provide. Like, don't be shocked because you promised that to start off with, mm -hmm. so, you know, you know. And at the same time, we're only hearing it from a Dory's point of view. That's right? also true. Yeah. Mm, that's no, true. It's always yeah. the other side. Cause who knows what she promised him or what, what you know, what the dynamic is. We only heard one side of it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I don't think it's, yeah. I don't think it's a selfish thing. I get like, yeah, it's, it's like, 
it yeah it's justifiable i guess mm. i don't know what do you think james yeah it's just, you you guys bring up a good point and another big thing that was brought up with jay with with what you just said was the whole thing of like yeah we only know the one side and that's kind of the hard thing about having a relationship or a situation that's coming from outside of the house being brought into the house is that we're only going to get the one side. We're only going to get Midori's side. We're not really going to hear anything from the boyfriend. Ass- assumably, we're going to mm-hmm. assume that we're not going to hear anything from the now ex-boyfriend, which makes things very difficult because we are never actually going to know the full story. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's there are the two sides of it. There is the one side where it's like, yeah, it sounds kind of selfish because it's like, man, you're following your dreams, so I'm breaking up with you. But there's the other thing of, yeah, well, he promised it to me the entire time, and he's not fulfilling his promise. And I feel I feel kind of bad for Midori because even though they've only been dating for like eight, nine months-ish, I do remember in the last episode that she did say that she was very much like into her boyfriend. She said something about like, I think she said that she loved him and that she... Whoa wants to marry this person Ugh. so she already had kind of some intentions in her head and now mm. that's all over and you know to see her crying and drinking wine in her room is like yeah you feel bad wait wait so like for sure they're breaking up or like they're on the verge um honestly mm, uh... like it's it's, <laughs> it's there like because i don't like from that conversation it's like yeah it's teetering to that like i didn't hear we broke up right mm. she said she did say we should just break up if it's gonna go like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I I just assume that, you know, we're gonna have a terrace house member that's actually in a committed relationship. Mm. Oh, we did. <laughs> but, and we did. We yeah, it's one. been a while. Yeah, right. But I uh, guess must be hard. Yeah. Anything can happen <laughs> on Terrace House. Mm-hmm. That was actually that was something that was really funny because it's it's literally the second episode that this girl is here and really i remember when we were watching it and specifically when i watched it the first time when i heard her say that they should break up i was like well that was quick (laughs) (laughs) but yeah we'll we'll have to see we'll have to see and it is an it is an evolving situation and we don't actually know if they are broken up yet but it is a rough spot for them but it's a very good way to kind of transition into what were into the next scene that happened because we cut to a little bit later where some of the girls i believe it was miwako and rina go into the living room to find a sleeping yosuke with his guitar next to him you know give a little little cuddle to the guitar mm. and they you know they see him and first instinct what do we do guys let's 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 draw some graffiti on him so on on that knee they drew a little smiley face and then they draw the little what i don't know what you call it the like they made him look angry all the time yeah like, they gave the, the angry look yeah yeah they gave the angry look so they gave the little like pinched thing on the yeah, forehead like the on pol- the yeah, yeah, yeah. and then as they with a red marker we're gonna draw like a red circle he wakes up mm. <laughs> and luckily he wasn't mad as much as he looked mad (laughs) he definitely wasn't mad but we also got to see yosuke playing guitar for miwako and rina and you know the guy can pluck some strings the guy can the guy can play a little bit Mm -hmm. but more importantly we do see midori showing up and the first thing that yosuke notices is that her eyes are swollen so she tells him what happened and he gives her some very good advice and some very good words of encouragement uh, I don't have any direct quotes here, but I think I do remember him saying something along the lines of if it was something like, if you guys are really meant to be together, then you're going to get through this or something like that. Yep. Yes. Yes. Kind of does direct us to think that maybe the relationship isn't over. So yeah, but very good words, very good advice and very great words of encouragement and words of wisdom from our oldest member, Yosuke. Mm. yep he said it right that's what that's what i was saying like um this episode is called he is mr perfect and already in the second episode with yosuke the guy is shining doesn't get mad when he gets vandalized weirdly thing too like how he handled it was very like chill 
And like, I don't know where he starts playing Bossa Nova on his guitar. <laughs> While the girls are like, wow, so pretty. <laughs> while while he still has a vandalized like face, which is pretty funny. I, I really like that part. He played and, through it. Yeah. And it was like a lightheartedness of uh, like a moment. Then as soon as Midori comes in, the guy went all serious. He's like, whoa, what's wrong? You, you seem, your eyes, they seem puffed up. Great, great sense of like reading the room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> And um, yeah, great advice. Seriously, um, if you can't make, um, yeah, he he gave options, right? Like if you if you don't want to, then it's all right. But if you really want to make this work, and if this is an issue, then how are you gonna make it work? If you want to marry this person, because like it's gonna be even way harder if you're already married, and you'll be dealing with this kind of stuff, right? So it's like the man is a spitting bars and facts here and there while while vandal with a vandalized face. So that was a great moment. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah on sorry on a little side note something that i just kind of thought of now was that yosuke so he was playing guitar right mm-hmm. and he was playing in front of miwako and rina yeah and coming from three guys who you know we 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 come from a little bit of a musical background you know like i, I i've studied it jay you play guitar tim you play guitar how how impressed do you think Rena was? Because she herself is a musician, right? Not she's at a all. singer songwriter. <laughs> wow, and... really? <laughs> I think she's like, oh, this guy can play like you know, like more. Like I think like from Rena's mindset, like I I was actually surprised. I'm like, oh, I thought this dude was gonna be playing you know open chords. Like you're expecting this... some like Wonderwall or something. <laughs> exactly right, and then. Like, you know, he started busting out the bossa nova. I'm like, all right, okay. You know what? His play style actually reminds me of Jay. I'm like, oh, if, if Jay were to pick up a guitar and play something, how would he play? I'm like, you know I what? Play Wonderwall. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> Shut up. No, you would <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I played that Oasis song and be like, two days gonna... Oh, wait, I forgot the chord. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's definitely a groove that I think True. Jay would play. I'm like, you know, that that's cool. I think, like, I think Rena would probably be the same because she's probably surrounded by like super talented musicians on the daily she's signed she probably sees like great vocalists and guitarists on a daily and probably collabs with like so many talented people so like i don't think Mm. she'd be blown away but i think she'd be like oh you're better than maybe (laughs) the one who says it like you know that just (laughs) he's better than the good old (laughs) gce open chords yeah yeah. exactly d e minor to make it a little bit of a oh it's a little dark here (laughs) yeah he's better than the typical pop chord progression guitar player true Hmm. yeah um i think she was impressed about it like um i don't know when you hear other musicians you try not you try to humble yourself even though if you're like better or like skillful based as long as they play with like and, and they enjoy it i think you know you have to be impressed by that because uh mm. while he was playing he, he seemed like he was like entranced or like he was in like a different kind of vibe which i i, I dug i dug it mm-hmm. so yeah I, I was like oh cool man he's well I, I think i'm more impressed with the fact that he's not like a typical like yeah open chords here and there. yeah right me too yeah but yeah Very i think that's the best that. part about it but re- regardless i think reno's like yeah sick this is awesome like you know yeah it called he had his groove face going right yeah. what do we call it right like you know when you're into it you just... there's the groove face there's a <laughs> yeah. stank face yeah. stank oh, face thank you that's that's what it is yeah he had this yeah. little stank face going he's feeling with the little he's with, the, it. Yeah. <laughs> with the marker on his face too yeah yeah, yeah. i i felt that i was more su- just surprised because you know in especially japan like a lot of times you have your one focus or like i guess your one trade and then that's that's the one thing that you really focus on but this guy uh, yeah i was expecting you know some basic 
just or just like some open chords nothing too like special but he was playing some like extensions some chord extensions and i was like oh yeah all right he can he can play which is good and it was, it was impressive <laughs> and it just kind of it fed into it fed into the story of yosuke, yosuke. being the the perfect guy yeah mm-hmm. his first yeah. chord was a bar chord that's already like a step <laughs> up <laughs> That's so you know. Oh, this guy knows. Oh, this guy knows. General. Yeah. (laughs) Not a not an open chord. A bar chord. A bar chord. And and it's it's not a it's not a strum. It was plucking. It was a. You say uh, arpeggios. Arpeggios. (laughs) Preggios. My goodness. Guys, let's stop stop being music snobs. Let's continue this episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, on the topic of Yusuke, Yosuke, because we we seem to have talked about him a lot, but I feel like this episode is very much focused on him and a lot of different facets about him. And just kind of furthering that, we do see the three new members, Yosuke, Midori, and Rina making some food, some really good looking food. And mm. we get to see a lot of sides of, of Yosuke. Like he gets to take a picture of the girls, you know, he he called the piece the plate. And the beauty. Wow. I know it's just a picture of the two girls in the kitchen. And Holding yeah, plates. so they're eating some nice curry. And the girls, or I guess the, from the way that I saw it, Midori specifically, <laughs> was asking about Yosuke's love life. And he talks about, you know, when he likes someone, he's all in. His his sights are narrowed in on the one person. And he brought up this really good line that I know Tim liked because he pointed it out too. He said that he's not good at love, but he came here to learn. Mm. He came to the show to learn. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. That is such a pickup line. I will tell Woo! you right now. Woo! Play some Bossa Nova right behind now. that. <laughs> Imagine that. I hope he I, I hope he said it next time. Like, yeah, I think I'm learning with you. <laughs> oh oh my god. But, but what one one other thing that we yeah, should yeah. keep of note is that when asked if he is one of the people that is a chaser or a chasey, he says that he definitely loves to be the one that chases. So maybe, you know, maybe if he stays long enough and he finds someone that he's interested in, maybe we'll get to see what he's like when he's chasing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, things get very interesting with Yosuke. Yosuke is just a very interesting guy. You know, I feel like he's someone that I would actually want to meet and like hang out with, you know? He's yeah, he's slick. But he's... yeah, let's just let's just keep talking about how, how good this guy is at, at, at talking and he just knows what to say. Like mm-hmm. the line he pulled out there saying, like, you know, like I came here to learn. It's like when you go into an interview. And then it's like, what's your greatest weakness? And you flip it and it's like, you know, it's like, oh, my greatest weakness is like, you know, I work too hard or I don't know like when to clock out or, you know, so it's exactly that except not as cheesy and not as like, I guess, upfront, but it it was just a smooth transition to like saying like, yeah, I got a lot of work to do, but I'm going to learn. Like I'm, Mm. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to put in the work. Oh, you think I know a lot now? No, I actually don't know a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. And then he, he keeps it humble. Checking the boxes. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Humble, Who is he? Man. <laughs> He's comfortable with himself. We saw it in the first episode. I don't surf. Oh, I surf, but I suck. <laughs> mm, you know, like he doesn't say like, yeah, I surf. I'm all right. You know, you play guitar. Yeah, a little. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And that's a perfect way to like, you know, unless you're like a. Yeah, he, he's he's putting that like, yeah, he's. He could be Mr. Perfect, guys. Mm-hmm. He's he's saying the right stuff. He has yeah. so much hobbies that he's pretty much good enough to like show in the show. Yeah, like things are spicing up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a certain confidence that he has. And it, it takes a confident person to actually be humble, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're if you're good at something most of the time you're going to be humble about it right but honestly yeah yosuke is doing everything right and he's just to keep talking about what the panelists have been talking about basically since he showed up this guy is what teich has been wanting to be this entire <laughs> time right like even just going down to like the comments that he makes he's it's just so smooth and it's so suave 
and, and reading the room. Your <laughs> eyes are so <laughs> dude. This guy. I mean, he's twenty nine, so it makes sense. This guy. What? Yes, he uses he uses that you know knowledge and wisdom of living life, um, especially when uh, talking to other housemates, especially Midori. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it. They're getting together. They're, Whoa. They're getting together. Okay. Oh, damn. Okay. I see it. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. But I did mention to Chan a little earlier, and to be honest, that was just to transition into this next scene because we do get to see Chan at another shoot. And what is it for? It is for a music video. And in this video, what is he doing? He's not talking. <laughs> he's he's just running, and mm-hmm. running, and running. <laughs> He's, yeah. The, the entire video is just a full on sprint for this guy, basically. Oh, yo. But, we can link that music video, can't we? Oh, oh, don't thing. worry. I, I will I will get to that, sir. Nice. Okay. But basically, yeah, it's it's a lot of running and a lot of him trying to look intense. And honestly, it looks good on him. Right? It looks good on him. And to to give a little context to what Tim was talking about, the three of us, or was it all of us and Cheska? Was yeah, it? and Jessica. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I watched the music video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually got to we watched the end product because we found it somewhere, and yeah, man, Taechan. It's 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 a different look for Taechan, and I feel like it suits him better, like better than whatever he was mm-hmm. doing for Last Cinderella because that was kind of rough. Yeah, Taechan looks good running slow, <laughs> in slow motion, <laughs> and in the rain. Then again. Yeah, it's hard to pull off. Yeah, I think he's really good at it. <laughs> we gotta give him his flowers and yeah. something, okay? <laughs> yeah, even the even the even the panelists in the show are like, "Wow, Teachon looks really good at running," and they're like, "Yeah, he looks good with his mouth closed or something." Or sh- <laughs> when he's grinding um, his teeth. Yeah, grinding his said. teeth. I was like, "Okay, yeah. all right, we'll give it to him, Teachon. Well, he needs some ups." Yeah. The thing for this music video was a while ago, like. I think maybe nearly 10 episodes ago. Or like yeah, we definitely to. watched it too early. We but, did. But we but thought I, we just skipped over it, right? Because yep. like how many episodes they, they just showed it at like like maybe a 3 minute clip in one of the episodes and No, they never they never actually showed it. No, they, no didn't. they they didn't show it, but they showed him getting the offer. Hey, yes. this band wants you to be part of the music video. Yes. And that was it. And we didn't hear anything until now. So, I'd say watching it early was justified. Yes. We didn't know if we'd see it. And we did, yeah. which is great. Hey, and man, I'm I, I'm just happy we found it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, that too. Yeah, and uh I will definitely have some clips of us watching the video. Probably I'll I'll have a little separate YouTube video for it and it'll just be a couple clips just because I don't want to show the entire thing for copyright reasons, but I will show clips of it and I'll probably put it on YouTube. I'll probably put it on Instagram. So once again, you can follow us there at We The Panel Pod on Instagram and you'll be able to see that there. I will post it a little after or maybe on the same day that we post this episode. So okay. be on the look for that. But yeah, he looked good. And you know who else looked good? Daiki, because we got to see a little training montage you know he was looking really good honestly we got to see everyone at work because we got to see yosuke doing his thing we got to see Taechan doing his thing daiki training as hard as he can and of course we got to see rena in a little songwriting session you know and i think was it was that her agents or maybe like someone that just helps her with songwriting i guess who said that like her songs are nice her her voice very nice she has a really good tone she yeah she sings very well she makes a lot of songs that are kind of happy to the end but he did say that her lyrics are a bit basic and he wants a song that shows rena as rena and he did mention that you know with her being on terrace house now hopefully she can find some sort of inspiration and yeah like i i don't know i thought it sounded i guess purely from like a listening standpoint i thought it sounded pretty good uh her voice her voice is nice she has a nice voice um i don't really want to i feel like i can't comment too much on the actual songwriting part because uh i'm not very strong in that sense either so but it's really cool to to watch her uh her process i guess and i hope we get to see more of it because she really intrigues me in like her work at least 
are you guys impressed more now? Because I know last episode we saw her live and you're like, oh yeah, she's okay. She yeah. can play chords here and there. But um, I, I liked it, man. Like her, her, her progressions were good. It was great. Like, and yeah, the, the person that she was, uh, that was helping her out does make great points. Like it is a song that seems like it's already out and anyone else could sing it. But again, that's, I guess, that's what makes a songwriting session really like good, especially if the person that you were working with knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you got to stand out somehow and your lyrics aren't cutting it out, which is great because I think she took that into perspective and I think she's great with it. And she hopefully we'll, we'll hear another amazing track from her, you know, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it was, it was a great, it was a great session. Mm hmm definitely liked her performance now more than uh when she was live on stage i maybe it could have been the way it was recorded maybe it could have been um like the the audio tech people but like her voice didn't feel as i don't know um for lack of a better word i guess powerful as like now mm -hmm. i could definitely i don't know i feel like now is just more of like a rich tone the way like her her voice is being picked up and you know like yeah i think her in the studio one-on-one -on -one is definitely better than her performance on stage mm. like last time maybe she's like a little bit more inexperienced when performing maybe that's what it was or maybe she was like a little off that day but i feel like yeah this her performance in this episode was the better of the two hmm Okay, well, you know, as we should know as well, performances and practices are very different. Yep. And you'll get very different, you'll get a very different sound out of those two different things. But overall, yep. I thought she was good. I thought she sounded good in her performance. But this, yeah, just this one on one session, it was also really nice. But moving on, we actually do get to the house. A little bit later where we see Yosuke on the computer editing some of his pictures and Midori shows up. So Yosuke shows her some of his pictures. And it was really cool because we got to learn more about the both of them actually. Because we got to we got to learn that Yosuke's been doing photography for about 10 years now. And we actually got to see one of his first pictures. I guess you say that he that he took like 10 years ago and we learned that, that he was actually playing guitar for around 20 years and yeah so there is one kind of line that he said that really stuck out to me and it was when he when they were talking about how he's committed to these things for so long and he said the things i love really stick with me and that is something that really stuck out to me because i feel like i feel the same way when you really like something like you're gonna stick with it right and it's in turn it's gonna stick with you right no matter if you're doing something else there's always gonna be that thing that you love that you're gonna keep doing for as long as possible right so it's it's wow. the same thing yeah you know uh, another and... perfect thing sorry another no, go perfect ahead, go thing ahead. about mr yosuke he's passionate mm. and another another trait that is quite attractive especially for Midori. <laughs> oh, sir, if we're talking about that, then that is a perfect segue because Yosuke actually also did kind of put a little bit of the schmooves on her, if you know what I'm trying to say. Because he was talking about how he really likes how or he was kind of asking her if she's always been like this for like her 20 plus years of living. And she was like, what do you mean? And he said that he really likes Midori's intense personality, right? He said that he was very much gravitated to her because he's never met someone with such an intense personality or he hasn't met someone like that in a very long time. And, you know, they were kind of, you know, they were talking and it felt, it felt like there was some sort of chemistry there. And it even reached the point where Midori is like, hey, yeah, like, I would love to go with you when you're taking your photos. And he's like, yeah, I would love for you to, like, model in them. So, you know, do you guys see something bubbling there? Like, a little something coming up? Oh, totally. How he how he brought it up. Because, like, I think it was, like, he said, or, like, how long have you been uh, photography and stuff? Oh, 20 years. Yes, 20 years. Like, the 20 years that you've been living, like, 
oh, what do you mean? Your personality? <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay. Ben has a word with words. Get the wine, <laughs> white wine. And Medora's like, I overfilled it. Ooh, that's a lot, but it's okay. <laughs> sip, sip. But yeah, <laughs> it was a very, very flirtatious conversation, my guys. <laughs> yeah, he, he was really good at, at, at flipping the switch, right? And putting, mm-hmm. giving it to her. You know, all of the talk was about him that entire time. And all of a sudden, hey, man, I, yeah, I've been doing this for so long. But you know what you've been doing so, for so long? Having that intense personality. Mm. I was just like, wow, this, this guy... <laughs> He's so suave. He's so smooth. Man. Imagine Taechan doing that. It's like, oh, yeah, 20 years. Yeah, like the 20 years you've been alive. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Sorry, what? You're 20 years old, right? Yeah. Oh, my Cool. God. I take photos. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah, very man. smooth. Very smooth. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me out, hear me out. So, mm-hmm. all right. So, this whole episode, we're talking about Mr. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. He's just been framed, put into this nice little box where, like, mm-hmm. he can shine. Sure. Fine. Whatever. We haven't seen any, of like, any red flags, so to speak, yet. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about his paramour in this ship, which is me Dory. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I was going to say Me-chan, but me Dory. Big red flag right off the bat is that she expects, well, maybe she doesn't expect, but I mean, like, I don't know, like, she has that dynamic of, like, the guy will have to, like, give up part of his dream, Mm -hmm. be with me. That's Uh... a huge red flag for me. Like, she, I guess she wants to be catered to. She wants to be, like, you know, like, nothing wrong with, like, with that, I guess, but, like, I don't know, like, she, she's, like, she's prioritized above everything else. I, mm. I feel like that's her thing. You feel you feel like that's not going to mesh with him? Is, is that kind of the thing? Yes, I think so. Mm. I think, like, he's very chill and very, like, I don't know, like, given, like, I don't see him being the type to, like, be, like, I, I will, like, make you a number one priority and put everything on my life on hold because like yes he does have tunnel vision yes he likes to chase but i i feel like this type of guy is looking for someone to give equal footing you know what i mean yeah like yeah. we're in a relationship which means we are working together to do something rather than the relationship being like i will take on the burden of expenses and everything to make you happy because to make you happy is my purpose and like you know what i mean like i feel I like see. that's her she's looking for a man like that to be like making me happy like making her happy is his purpose mm-hmm. and i don't think yo is is that guy you got yeah. something there but um i don't think it's okay you're jumping the gun you're already forming a relationship between him and and you're right i don't think he's the type of guy to do that yeah, so I don't think they're long term. Like they're definitely flirting. Don't get me oh, wrong. Oh, for sure. He said it. He likes to chase. So yeah, yeah. Right? guys, but- guys, this is a broadcast. Come on now. The chase <laughs> has always been fun. Come on. Ah! But it gets down to the yeah, okay. of yeah, you're not set- like not settling down, but like I want a relationship. That's when it gets real, and that's when it's like okay, it could last, or it's like it was fun. Like come, mm. don't get me wrong. The chase is fun, boys. Boys. Yep. It was. It's, it's a good time. And I think um, our boy here is learning how to love, right? Like, that's why he's in the show. <laughs> it's all part of his his uh, thing. And I, I do hope that, like, actually don't, I, I actually don't want this whole, like, it's fun seeing them, like, you know, be all in this kind of chemistry one another. But I don't think, I don't want to see them together, to be honest. Hmm. Just because I think... Same. Because Miyoko, um, not Miyoko, um, Midori, what she sees in a relationship could be totally, is totally different from what Yosuke's trying to like achieve here for a relationship. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, 
I, <laughs> yeah, tell, tell, tell I will me. say this. I mean, with that, I guess established for 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 Midori, right? Like she's looking for that type of guy to like drop everything and prioritize her. Yo doesn't seem like the guy in the house to do that, but I think there is one guy in the house that Stop. fits the criteria. Stop. Taiki's Stop. not like that. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 and, but like if it ever got to that you ever think like okay i it was the guy like uh midori's um boyfriend agreed to having that into the relationship she, he's like yeah i want that so it's kind of like you're setting yourself up here buddy like <laughs> okay is that sustainable like mm. so like before all of this happened do you think her boyfriend was a simp? Oh, <laughs> tier three <laughs> sub, baby. Tier three <laughs> sub. Um, I could see that. I could see that. I think. I think. Like. I mean, hands down, Midori is very attractive. Um, it helps. Yeah, you I next. could see that. And like, he probably. I don't want to. Like, I don't even know the guy. He. Ha- we don't even know his face. <laughs> but like, in my mind, he's the guy who's saying anything he needs to say, to like to get the girl. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'll give up mm-hmm. my dreams. We'll, we'll live together and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I'll make all the money and make you happy because you know, like, just to lay pipe, honestly, <laughs> like. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah yeah like like he, he was in the pitch yeah. meeting he's like yes this is what i want in this relationship forever or as long as this like we can stand and of course you know if that's what Midori's like you know what that's a pretty good deal i'm about it i'm a late type too <laughs> let me let me build these blocks with you baby <laughs> And now he's like, you know what? I kind of want to learn English. <laughs> I'm out. He's like, oh, oh wait. Horrible. Do you think he's learning English for her? Because <laughs> she grew up in the States. She knows English. She's fluent in English. But she's dating a Japanese guy. Yo, what if he's just learning English for her? That's so mm. pointless. I mean, like, mm. sure, like, fine. Like, I mean, I tried learning, like, uh, like French for my girl right now because she did French for a long time. Like, there's no point in learning the language for the person if you're going to lose the person in the process of learning the language. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but maybe the fact that they never thought that they'd be, uh, they would break up is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to learn English with this girl for ever because <laughs> i'm gonna give up my dreams just to make and because my dream is to make her happy it's all like it's it's like it's like a loaded question you know like are you really <laughs> sure like, like it, you're okay with this and maybe he didn't think about it because it was such an early part in the relationship yes <laughs> yes <laughs> anything yeah yeah i'll sign it just, just give me whatever i'll sign whatever like yeah like, <laughs> like it's interesting because like if, if a girl said that's like oh man like i get it tim like it's such a red flag like he he said he's not gonna give everything up for me anymore <laughs> yeah, it's a red flag but i think it's the fact that the way she said it's like this was how it was said so at the start mm-hmm. i was like well oh well, can't mean, feel bad for the guy <laughs> yeah he yes <laughs> He signed at the the dotted line. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's breaching his contract. Yeah, he is. I mean, if you said you do that, you gotta keep to your word, bud. Yeah, like a man has a word, like, and he's like, I don't want to learn English. <laughs> Please wait for me. Like, it's hard. Like, yeah. it's weird because usually you'd hear that, like, oh man, that girl's a red flag, and you're right. But it's like, bro, you said this. Yeah, you. Uh, hmm. it's, it's it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there's always there's always something about when the guy wants to go to an English speaking country for a while and asks to wait for him. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sounds kind Kare- of familiar, doesn't it? <sighs> for a career and whatnot, and <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, I hope I hope we don't get a repeat of that situation. I feel like it's like maybe the way he phrased it. You know, like mm. maybe if he like pointed out like, oh, I'll learn English to get a better job because, you know, like over there, people who are able to speak English and also Japanese can do a lot better. 
oh, let me learn English so I could like, you know, get a better job to provide for you or whatever. Like, you know, if he still wants to do that, then yeah, like say that, you know, yeah. like by doing that, my right. dream, I can fulfill the overall dream of simping for you for life. Like, <laughs> yeah, I could get I mean, a better job and I could simp better for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that could work out. But of course, Midori did not take it that way. <laughs> nope. No, she did not. No. But okay, before we get too into calling this guy a simp and a tier three sub on our Twitch oh, channel, oh yo, no, like, nothing wrong with being a simp. I'm a nope. simp, guys. Yeah, hey, we. I simp yeah. for my girl, like hands yeah. down. It's, you gotta yeah. find the right girl to simp for, not mm -hmm. you know <laughs> the tier yeah, yeah. three. You gotta find the know? worthwhile simping, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah. not the girl of the <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> if you're gonna simp, might as well simp hard. You know, you gotta yeah. go and you gotta got tier three that baby, and you gotta <laughs> dono that donation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the bits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys, definitely. Anyways, shout out to Midori's boyfriend. I hope you're doing or well. Or ex boyfriend. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, okay. you don't if know you yet. Be on the show. <laughs> Stop! No. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, uh, we've done these bits too many times guys yeah. <laughs> we've done it too many times okay right, right. let's just move on, on to the last scene yes of the last episode scene because it is the one scene that doesn't focus on any of the new members really because we get to see in the living room miwako is chilling at home and daiki and taechan like the cute couple that they are come back to the house and meet her there <laughs> And mm -hmm. they talk about his match, which is actually happening in 15 days. So two weeks, Ooh. maybe two episodes, we're going to see a Daiki match. And crazy enough, Miwako tells him that she's probably not going to make it to the fight because she has this really big modeling audition. And, you know, mm -hmm. Daiki's like, yeah, hey, it's OK. You do you. It's fine. But boom, big twist, big pop out of us. Taechan said that he has a play, so he also won't be able to go. Which, uh, oh my goodness, that's crazy. Nah. But, you know, even... Then there's a bigger play. Yeah. There, there, there's a... <laughs> to, to kind of over... Just to kind of bring this entire story to a close, after the fight, Daiki said that he is thinking of leaving the house and as he says that the episode ends so yeah lots of stuff that happened in that very last scene and i guess now knowing that the og or i guess like his og friends that are still in the house miwako and taechan are both not gonna be there do y'all think do y'all think he's gonna lose because I'm, I have this like inkling feeling that he might lose because they're not there. Oh, I, I didn't even think about the match. I was just <laughs> thinking how they said is like, oh, so Daiki, yeah, I can't make it to your match. I'm sorry, I got this thing. Oh, Daiki, I can't make it to this match. I gotta play. <laughs> I'm like thinking about it in a childish way. Oh yeah, can't make it to the match. Don't worry, because I'm not gonna make it after this match at this house. <laughs> 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 um but i think it'll be fine i think it'll be fine um if anything he should win just because like you know you don't want to get out of the house with a losing record mm. you know come out strong um daiki seems like the type to persevere even if no one like i guess is there to support him but there's obviously like his team and his coach right so like i don't think that will be a determining factor I think it's going to suck if he loses and there's just like, but like, I mean, the odds of him losing are probably in my mind, not because there's oh. nobody from the house to support him, but rather like he's had it too good for too long. Like mm. that's my mentality with every fighter that comes up. Like, you know, like any boxer, any UFC guy, MMA, kickboxing, like it's, you can only win for so long. There are exceptions to the rule. Like, I was gonna say, uh, Floyd has Floyd something Mayweather, to say about yeah, that. Okay. Except for right. the role, but I mean, like again, like don't actually no, I won't get that started here. I won't, I won't trigger. Tim, you gotta believe in our guy, man. He's called Dikey Man. 
Daikin <laughs> Man is here. Yeah, like, man. Man. yeah dude, like, gotta believe in him, even though I didn't. <laughs> 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 I just want him to win because it's like, yeah. Oh, I want. Come on, yeah, leave the house. I want to leave on top. Yeah, come on, mate. And I feel like he's already he's won a lot already without them. So it's just like it's okay. Don't worry. True. True. I just feel like as a story, it would make sense. You know, if, if this was like, if this was a boxing anime, you know, and, and Daiki was just finding out that his friends, his friends, like his support group isn't going to be there on his back, on his side, helping him through it, then maybe he might lose, you know, but I hope he wins. Like, obviously, I hope he wins because I just want Daiki to go to the moon or whatever, but to the moon, but like, yeah. I don't know anything can happen but he is leaving the house also oh my god yeah that's a big thing he's leaving the house which means that taishan once again is going to be the only original guy in the house and yeah there's that's so crazy just there's always such an influx of new people and then there's taishan you know I, I i feel bad for the guy because he's just going through the most you know this is this is Taechan house, not Terra's house. Come on, guys. <laughs> he's, he's sticking house. to the end, baby. <laughs> We're gonna see him turn into like the 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 ultimate come up story by the end of this series. And I'm like, yeah. And you said there's a movie? Oh my god, he's he better star in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, okay. Well, now that the episode's over, do you guys have any predictions for what's gonna happen next episode? Miwako gets turned down. <laughs> Ooh, by Daiki? Yeah. You think she's so, going to go for she's it? She's going to shoot her shot and it's not going to happen. Ooh. Not going to happen. Are you sure? Okay. So, like, what about... Oh, no. Okay. Because... So, the reason that Daiki never saw her that way is because he knew that Taechan was going after her. Mm. But now Taechan's not going after her. And also, we did see the scene before Hana left saying that she she's rooting for him and hoping that he finds love there you know so i don't like if miyoko asks him out on a date i don't think he's gonna say no oh yeah you're right yeah. but when it comes down to like her professing her her feelings with him mm. he's gonna be like no i think mm. that's gonna say no I don't, okay i'm not I, I still don't see you that way even still without the teach on factor yeah okay okay i don't know it's mm. it's 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 very hard to say because at the same time daiki is leaving so if miwako does like confess to him and they let's say hypothetically they start dating if daiki's leaving the house does that mean that miwako is also going to leave the house no i think Whoa. outside of the house yeah i think Anyway, I mean, I could be wrong, but... Yeah, because she's only been there for, like, barely any time. She's been there for maybe, like, two months, maybe. Mm -hmm. So her time's been really short. I'm just holding on to the fact that she's the girl that never got love back. That's a great storyline. Mm. She's such a sweet girl, you know? Everyone would love to, you know, be with her, but the one that she can the one that she wants most yeah tv like that's good content and you want to root her on i'd root her on more when that happens if if anything if they got together mm -hmm. okay 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 well tim as you're wrapping your hand any <laughs> oh. any any big uh, predictions for what's gonna happen next are you gonna box Daiki? Is that I would actually <laughs> love the honor of sparring with Daiki, um, but uh, I'd say he's gonna lose. He's had it too good for too long. Uh, he had two back-to-back -back championships. Like again, like I mean, no doubt to his prowess. And actually, we have no idea what his opponent's looking like. Mm. But I feel like that would be. That'd be the change of pace, the uh, the leave on a loss, rebuild, <laughs> rebuild, and and he'll conquer and, and win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 What about like 
What about Yosuke? Are we gonna see any anything when it comes to Yosuke and Vi- Midori? Are we gonna see any like additional things between them, possibly? I feel like we're gonna start getting red flags with Yo, because mm. like right now he's being framed to be Mister Perfect. So then, if you frame somebody to be perfect, then any little mistake that they do will be a big red flag. Mm. And so I feel like putting him in that box of Mr. Perfect is like just setting him up for failure. Mm-hmm. Quick question. Did Cheska, when she, cause she, she usually has a good read on these guys. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> Did she felt a bad vibe on that first impression? No, she didn't. She said, like, I feel like there was not enough evidence. That yeah. She felt very indifferent. Yes. So it needs, needs more facts. Yeah. yeah. We need more facts. Jessica, what do you think? Based on this episode, because yeah, it looks real go. good right now. He looks real nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Cheska, get in the comments, let us know. And also, everyone watching, get in the comments, let us know what you think as well. Yeah. But if there's nothing else for us to say, then this will be the end of the episode. But of course, before we go, this is another reminder to let you know that we, the panel, a Terrace House podcast can be found on all podcasting platforms such all as Spotify, Apple yeah. Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the other ones that Tim said at the start of the episode. But you can find it all on our anchor page at anchor.fm slash we dash the dash panel. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below on what you thought of the episode, as well as anything that you want to predict for the next couple of episodes and so on and so forth. Also, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell. So you're kept up on all uploads that we have here at we the panel. But also if you want to be kept up with what we're doing you can follow us on instagram at we the panel pod where i post little videos about every episode that comes out in addition to some other stuff that little taechan stuff where we watch the taechan music video it'll also be there so feel free to follow us there to be kept up on everything we the panel so now that those plugs are done we got some personal plugs of course so starting with everyone's favorite tim oh tim me of course uh where can we find you you guys can find me right here on we the panel as well as my personal insight down below where i post not very many things but cool woodworking stuff on my story so take a look at that yeah i just started turning lightsabers so if you want to take a look at yeah those. that was actually really cool i saw your story and i was like thank yo you. that's pretty sick thank you thank you I try. Nice. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not great. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. Wow, you're of... so humble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But of course, we do have our favorite not-so-silver-haired fox himself. Jason, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at twitch.tv slash jiggles and yeah, Instagram. <laughs> and you'll see my links down below. Links. Really. Link. But um, enough about me. How can we find James in the internet? James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you can all you can find all of my socials, like my Instagram and my YouTube down below where I post not a lot, to be honest, but there's some like music stuff there and you can follow me on instagram if you want to talk about anything terrace house anything i don't know marvel related i guess um invincible season one just finished so if y'all want to talk about that anything with season two i'm down to talk so yeah feel free to follow me there but now that we are done all of our personal plugs it is the end of the episode so from myself james jason and tim we want to thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next time take care bye